Hello, welcome to this new video in Unreal. I've got to think about another intro. I, uh, I'll just stick with this for now. We are looking at uh, a render, a high, super high res actually, render from Unreal using ray tracing in this awesome uh, um, container scene that I have to give full tribute to my man. Uh, the one and only Mr. Warner Honor Wanter, um, the king of ArcViz on YouTube, and uh, he contacted me and said we should do something, and we did. And uh, he said, "What do you want to do?" <laughs> I looked on his channel. I thought, "Wow, look at this thing! That looks so cool!" And um, we kind of uh, had a few back and forth, and. I believe this is in Lumion, and I thought, how interesting, we'll do the same in Unreal. And this is the effect. So you can judge by yourself whether you want to compare. I don't know uh, Lumion, I don't use it, so I wouldn't be able to tell you. But uh, this was great, great fun to play with. And I'll give also full tribute to the scene, to the guys. Uh, for the scene to the guys from Evermotion because that's where I got it from ArcViz Exteriors here and that's one of the scenes and I guess this is actually uh, rendered in V-Ray in fact I don't need to guess I know exactly it was done in V-Ray because I've got the scene right here and you see that as uh, what's great about the Evermotion scenes is that they're uh, modeled in great detail uh, you know, everything's kind of, um, all the details are there, all the little chamfers everywhere, and even the mesh is a mesh, uh, which kind of causes problems in Unreal, but that's good to know about. And, um, you know, it's a really impressive kind of um, image of this kind of really dynamic angle looking down, uh, looking up from the eye level view. So I've got a couple of, I'll just flash it once more <laughs> for your viewing pleasure, because I've got this one as well, which is with my friend Pascal. We were uh, playing around and he's a filmmaker and he was like, oh, do the, uh, do the Netflix look. <laughs> and so here we go. Here's the Netflix look. I'll hopefully show you that in just a sec. So let's get rid of this thing. And here we are in Unreal. I'm actually in the camera here, so I'll get out of that and we'll see that. So this is in ray tracing. In fact, I've got my camera update, so I'll turn that off, save a few frame rate, a few frames. So full screen, you know, it is suffering. Of course it will. It's got full global illumination and everything. So we'll turn that off uh, and at 20, um, a 2K resolution, I think we can't complain too much with what we're seeing here. In fact, I'll kind of reduce the fr the um, viewport so that we can see a little bit better and it's a little bit smoother for me. And you'll see, so there's there's obviously, you know, quite a lot of, quite a few tricks have been applied in here, a few um, of my own. And if you want to know more in depth about this do join my membership you can go on my website and it's pretty inexpensive at the moment prices are going to go up in the new year and we've got a three hour webinar or i think two or two and a half hour where we rebuild this thing from scratch all together uh, so obviously i'm not going to go through all the details right now i'll i will kind of walk you through so i'll uh, create a new level here quickly and then we can uh, i'll just keep that unsaved and I'll show you more or less how I did, how I went about doing this. Obviously, Datasmith uh, works a absolute treat. So I just, I've got the Datasmith file in here. I'll just press F to show my, to check that I've got everything. And again, as I say, usually as always, uh, check your uh, model using the unlit mode here in Unreal. And you can see that just in that unlit mode, you know, well, uh, it's not because it's in real time that we can't use. I don't like this grill, so I'll get rid of it. Boom, get rid of that. And 
you can see that we've got all the model. I did get rid of the trees. There's some kind of high poly trees we did, which didn't really work for us too well. I've actually prepared a, uh, a sky here with an HDRI. So I'll just drag and drop that. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> what I need to do first is drag a uh, sky dome in here. So nothing too crazy. Uh, I'll sh I've got one in the engine. So we'll do SM underscore sky sphere and then we've got one here here's my sky sphere and i'll scale that up because you can see it's a little bit small and now i can drag and drop my sky in here okay so we've got the sky obviously the cool thing about this technique is that now we can just sort of swap the skies just as we want and here's our green sky um you know in a complete interactive way and this is absolutely fantastic. Um, we are in ray tracing. I know that because I've got this path tracing here. And so I will go into the light mode, into the modes panel, sorry, bring in a skylight. And then if I go into the lit mode here, I've got my skylight that's kind of nicely um, illuminating my scene. I'll also bring a post process volume because we want to stop. You see, it's kind of going a little bit over overboard in terms of the exposure here. So with the post process volume in the scene, infinite extent unbound, obviously, uh, of course, so that it acts on the entire scene. And then here I'll just go and um, you I'll choose manual mode and then whack that up so that I can have the um, the exposure that I want. Uh, so obviously here uh, we need to bring in a few lights. So we'll do that in just a sec. But I think you'll agree that our um, scene is already looking pretty cool. I like to tweak the post-process volume forever. I'm sure you do too. And I like to add a strong vignette here. I just had a really strong vignette. And then I need to compensate a little bit maybe with the post-process you know, if we kind of go really, really full on with the with the vignette, it's kind of strange how uh, it sort of disappears after a while. Uh, you can't really see it, but it adds a lot of focus to the center of the image. Um, saying that, I'm going to add a tiny little bit more, uh, maybe up to 13 here, and we can uh, decrease that lens flare a little bit, which is in my opinion, too strong. You can just about see it here. You can really see it when you move the camera. It kind of shouldn't really be there. Uh, I don't know why it is in the first place. And so that, well, my clock says eight minutes, kind of, you know, with me chatting in, uh, before, that's how long it took to uh, change that, uh, that scene here. Obviously, you know, there's a few materials to fix. And, uh, but here again, Data Smith is doing just a fantastic job. So here, for example, if you want to uh, do a quick and dirty job, I like it quick and dirty always, you can just uh, use a material that already exists. We're not gonna go into much depth in the materials, uh, you know, again, because it's just too much time, but it's really easy to just fix um, the scenes like that by just drag and dropping the materials on uh, on the mesh. And again, I'll just pick that, use that little magnifying glass to find it in the content browser. And I can just uh, drag and drop the materials that I tweaked beforehand straight onto there. Okay, so I'm just going to select these guys using my control key. Uh, that's not working too well for me. So I'll do that. And then I'll just display all of these and then see if that works for me. Otherwise, I'm not going to bore you with that. I'll just do that super quick. I encourage you to go and register at Evermotion and to kind of, you know, try that yourself. If you've got 3ds Max or Cinema 4D, it works quite well, as you can see. And then finally, we'll go into the lights and I'll add a spotlight here that I'll put over there in that corner. And that's really, uh, I want to highlight again, the beauty of ray tracing. You don't have to use ray tracing. In fact, sometimes, you know, 
you may not uh, want to because of the, um, the target platform that you may want to use or you want, may want to have uh, some uh, something that's kind of fairly low uh, low uh, in terms of power and things but again if you can just appreciate the shadows if I can get the angle right I'll rotate it a little bit like that so that we can see press uh, space to scroll and then if you can just see these shadows here that's really pretty amazing as far as I'm concerned to see that anywhere uh, in a real-time renderer we've got the preview here so because we're in uh, ray tracing we don't want need to bake the lighting but here to have these kind of um, very precise shadows that is pretty amazing i just like to use the temperature here to contrast with a you know cold stormy weather that we've got uh, coming that's very much like the weather i've got outside of my window today in the uk and then we can just duplicate these lights a little bit and move them a little bit like that and then i'll use my favorite well one of my favorite features alt and shift to be able to duplicate these guys um and i'll just change my angle a little bit so i can see what i'm doing alt and shift duplicate uh, so that we can sort of duplicate the lights at the same time as changing uh the camera angle the camera kind of comes with it and here we are by magic so i'll go back and select them all so i can maybe move them a little bit forward and we have um a scene very 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 quickly done thanks to uh to unreal and of, of course well the model <laughs> which was uh you know very very well done uh, at the onset of course so if you want to do photorealism Obviously, that's going to be a great, great help. I always say, you know, it's going to be, well, no secret. It's going to be a great model. Um, and then your textures and then obviously the lighting. So I can just bulk edit the, the lights. We don't have lights that act as uh, instances like we do in uh, 3ds Max, for example, which is a bit of a shame, but, you know, we can't have everything. It does work though if you just select them all and bulk edit like that and finally we can add a little bit of fog so we'll go to the place actors fog exponential height fog you can see that that's kind of a little bit overblown straight away we want to go into the volumetric fog uh, i'll kind of add that and then i'll make that in scattering color uh, black which and i'll actually reset that view to distance i like to bring down the max opacity if it's a little bit too strong and then we can use the extinction scale to kind of make it a little bit more subtle so fog actually is a bit of a you need to spend a bit of time on it to make it look just as you want but the reason why really so here if i disable it we can kind of see what it does um the reason why I really like to have the fog is to be able to here if I duplicate uh, use the volumetric scattering intensity here at the bottom to kind of whack that up and even I'll put 150 so that we can really see what that does you know uh, the volumetric the fog here is really um, you can almost sort of compose this, your your fog with the uh, with the lights like that it's pretty pretty cool so I'll just add that. Maybe that's kind of always a little bit too strong. So I'm doing this obviously super fast to show you, uh, to cater for the, uh, you know, uh, ADD <laughs> that YouTube uh, is on here. But obviously you could spend a little bit more time to do this with more precision. That being said, we're kind of getting uh, to to a pretty good result pretty quickly. If we want to add a little bit more of quality here in our uh, our reflection samples here, we can use again the post process volume. I'll just click on that, go down to uh, the uh, reflections ray tracing reflections here, and I'll kind of go near a little bit so that we can see the results so here you can see this 
all this sort of noise in the metal and what I want to do is increase the number of samples per pixel so if I go 8 for example you can see that suddenly we get a really very 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 clean surface back to 1 it gets sort of really a little bit dirty here and then 8 I wouldn't go too much on these samples because they're going to really hit your frame rate but if we go 16 you know, we can't really see that much in my my viewport gets really quite sluggish so that's almost too clean I quite like the uh, the sort of dirty noise a little bit and obviously uh, you can get that when you use the cinematic movie render queue you can get uh, do things a little bit more cleanly all right so that was that for today's video thank you so much uh, owner for uh, you know doing that with me and uh, to to spur me on to do this i want to point you if you are struggling to learn unreal you have uh, if you're scared of the interface do go on my website fabrizboeli.com and watch my new free workshop 90 minutes of intense intense tutorial super super useful we rebuild again this uh, thing from scratch i go in every single little detail of uh, my method of uh, working of building this basically and you should be on your way to uh, to get these results if you are at all struggling or if you're learning it's absolutely from scratch uh, uh, from zero in fact well we'll i'll take you through how to uh, install uh, this version of unreal and it's aimed at for really complete beginners who want to get this result very very quickly great well i hope that was useful let me know in the uh, comments uh, what uh, you think about this if you've got any questions for future videos that's very uh, useful for me share like subscribe and the whole gamut i hope uh, to see you and to hear from you i hope to see some of the things that you do with this and um, i will see you in the next video